Hey everyone, I've got another fascinating game for you today between Wilhelm Steinitz against Augustus Mongredian. And we've had a similar matchup before where the two players have met previously in a London tournament. However, this was played a year later in 1863. Steinitz was playing white and Mongredian was playing black. Now, when these two players played last time, it was a centre counter, but this time they played a different opening. Steinitz played e4. G6 is played by black, and now D4. So we get Bishop G7 from black, and we're into a modern defense. And Steinitz played a, a very, not a rare move, but um, not a common move either. He played the move C3, supporting the D4 pawn in the center. So just solidifying his nice pawn structure. And black played the move B6, trying to go for a double finchetto bishop. Steinitz played bishop to e3 against the defender center, developing a piece. And bishop b7 from black, knight d2 from Steinitz, d6, and knight gf3 was played by white. f4 was another move that maybe white could play, but I've played against these sort of systems before, and I actually really like the move d5 in this type of position. Now the engines absolutely hate it, but the point is that after e5, and black plays e6, Black's got a very solid structure. After say bishop d3 and h5, there's no real way for white to sort of infiltrate black's position. For instance, after bishop e f2, there's knight h6, knight f3, and black can play moves like a5, and will eventually play knight to f5 with a very solid structure for both sides. Now the computer actually gives this as plus 1.5 for white, but it's gonna be really difficult for white to infiltrate black's position. But back to the actual game, Steinitz played knight to f3, so just developing his piece, very nice indeed. And perhaps black should now solidify as well and play knight d7. Because after a4, if white plays this, a6 can be played by black. After bishop d3, maybe black can play e6, and they've got like a sort of hippo setup. Um, black's very solid, and it's going to be a long and difficult game for white to break down black's structure but in the game black actually struck out first with e5 so diving straight into the center i'm not really sure of this move because black is actually lacking development here um, and Steinitz just simply took it so d takes e5 d takes e5 and the problem black has now is that the bishop on g7 is locked in and this e5 pawn really is quite bothersome for this bishop because it's now got no scope so I'm not really sure about this e5 move. Steinitz played bishop c4, so developing onto a very nice square. Black played knight to e7, which isn't the best move, and you'll see why in a second. So in this position, Steinitz actually played queen to e2. However, this may have been a mistake, because white can actually play the crazy move, bishop takes f7. After king takes f7, White can follow up with queen to b3 check. And suddenly white gets a really nice position. For instance, let's say knight d5. Then white can simply castle and have a great game. So black can try and give the piece back. But white's just going to develop and impose their dynamic pieces on black's wheat structure now. So instead of knight d5, king e8 was also possible. But now white can play knight to g5 and threaten moves like knight to e6, queen f7, and white's got a very nice game. For instance, if bishop h6, knight to f3, takes takes, and rook f8, white can follow in with knight to e6, hitting both the queen and the rook at the same time. If queen to d6, white can follow in with rook to d1, and actually, white's got a tremendous game now. So hitting the queen, hitting the rook, and the pieces are going to swiftly come into the attack for white. For instance, here it's very easy to lose because if, let's say, queen c6, there's even moves like knight g7 checkmate. So black's suffering here, very nice. So perhaps in this position, bishop f7 should have been played. But instead, Steinitz played queen to e2, and white's position isn't that bad. Black castles, and Steinitz played h4. So this is a typical move in this sort of position. Trying to crack open black's position. White doesn't need to castle yet. They could potentially castle queenside if they need to. But um, white's position is very strong at the moment. 
And black's got to be quite careful because if um, they try and block this h pawn with h5, white's got tremendous move g4. And the point is that after g4, white's just infiltrating black's position and cracking open these pawns. So if um, black takes this g4 pawn, white can play knight to h2, where white will pick up the g4 pawn and can still play h5 if they wish. So after knight c6, white can continue the h5. If knight to a5, there's h6. Hitting the bishop, if bishop f6, finally white can take on g4 with the knight. After queen d6, play bishop d3 and just retreat back. Black can continue with rook to d8, but then b4 hitting the knight. After queen takes d3, there's knight takes f6 check. And suddenly black's losing a piece because after king h8, there's b takes a5. And white's got a great attack and just won more material. So h4 is a really bothersome move for black to deal with. Black actually played knight to d7 in the game, but this now allows white to play the move h5. And suddenly they're crashing into black's position and white's got this nice open h file for the rook. And this nice bishop on c4 causes black a lot of issues as well. So suddenly white's pieces are all ganging up on black's king. Black played c5 and white recaptured on g6 and black's got a decision to make the f pawn can't capture this g pawn because it's pinned by this bishop so he's got two moves h takes g6 or knight takes g6 if h takes g6 then white will continue with knight to g5 after knight to f6 white can castle queenside and has a very nice game play could continue queen c7 with g4, knight c6, and f3. Threatening to play queen h2. So after b5, bishop d5, and c4, white plays queen h2 with a tremendous game. And he's threatening moves like maybe knight to h7, or even bishop takes f7 and give up two pieces for the rook if necessary. Bishop c5 would also be a nice move. So black was forced to take with the knight, knight takes g6, a very awkward move, and not really went where you want your knight. White castled queenside, and this rook now is eyeing up this queen on d8. So white's developed all her pieces, and has two very nice open files for their rooks, and the bishop on c4 is very nicely placed. Black continued with a6, preparing b5, maybe trying to kick this bishop off c4. But now Steinitz continued, knight to g5, hitting the pawn on h7, forcing black to make another decision. So there's two moves to try and defend this pawn. One of them is h6, hitting the knight, but now white should continue with knight takes f7. Because after rook takes, there's bishop takes and king takes. White can play knight to c4, threatening moves like knight to d6, check, and winning the bishop on b7. If black goes back with king to g8, then white can take on b6 with the knight. The point is that the knight on e7 is pinned by this rook. So if queen takes b6, white will continue queen c4 with check. The king goes to f8 and white can play rook takes d7 with a nice mating idea on queen f7. And actually the only way to defend this is knight to e7 and white would continue rook takes. After the king takes, there's bishop c5 check, winning the queen. So that's a long variation, but h6 just makes black busted. So in the game, black played knight to f6 to defend this pawn, but this also leads to a busted position. Steinitz found the great move, knight takes h7, and after knight recaptures, white's got several ways to continue the attack. Queen h5 was probably considered the best move, hitting the knight on h7 for any mate, because after knight to f6, white can take on g6, and the bishop on c4 pins this f7 pawn. Play could continue queen c8, but then white's got a very nice finish. There's rook h7, threatening mate on g7. After knight takes on h7, there's bishop h6, threatening queen takes g7, and there's literally no way for black to stop this. Queen g4 is literally the only move. And after queen takes g4, knight g5, queen takes g5, there's no way to stop this mate on g7. 
So that was one way to continue, but um, Steinitz found an alternative with rook takes h7. After the king recaptured, there's queen h5 check, which was played. After king g8, there was rook h1 by Steinitz. Queen takes g6 was also a possibility here, but we get into a long, arduous variation. I don't think white wants this, because after queen h4, there's queen takes b6, bishop takes e4, and g3. Queen g4 takes, takes, and bishop d5. Black can actually continue though with rook a b8, hitting the queen. After the queen takes a6, queen g4, rook h1. Rook f d8 from black and queen to d3, threatening queen h7. There's e4, takes, 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 and we're into an end game where white has three extra pawns, but also the exchange down. This is still a win for white, but I don't really think Steinitz would want this type of position when they can finish off black much quickly. So queen takes g6 is an option here, but actually Steinitz found the move rook h1, which is much better, just threatening mate on h7. So rook e8 was played by black, and now white can play queen takes g6. Because now there's no queen h4, because his rook on h1 defends. In the game, black played queen f6 to defend this f7 pawn. But Steinitz found another brilliant move. Bishop takes f7 check. The point is that after, let's say, king f8, white would continue bishop takes e8. Rook takes e8 and can actually play the move rook h8 check. The point is that after bishop takes, there's bishop h6. If the king runs, there's bishop g5, pinning the queen against the king. And if bishop g7, there's the amazing finish, queen takes f6. Because the bishop on g7 is pinned by the bishop. So bishop takes f7 from Steinitz. Black actually took with the queen. And I wonder if you can find the finish here. It was a very nice finish. Well, actually, he just played it really simply. Played the move rook h8 check. The point is that the bishop is pinned once again. So after the king recaptures, white will just play queen takes f7, which is what Steinitz played. And black actually resigned the game here. So why did black resign suddenly? Well... The queen hits the bishop on b7, so black's got to defend this. So rook a b8 may have been the move. Um, but after, like, say, a move queen g6, it's going to be very hard for black to defend this. So white hits the pawn again. Let's say black played a move like bishop a8. White can just get the knight into f3 and suddenly start playing moves like knight g5. It's going to be very difficult for black to defend this type of position. So ultimately, Steinitz played a really nice game, very attacking once again. And I was just reading about this game in Kasparov's Great Predecessors, and he actually writes, The aggressive and inventive style of Steinitz, who had been raised in the German School of Combination, pleased the English amateurs, for they were able to learn a great deal from him, just as conversely Steinitz did from their more solid play, said Lasker. So the English were noted for more solid play, until Steinitz introduced them to this masterclass of attacking play. Anyway, this was another great game. I hope you enjoyed my analysis. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll post the links to this game if you want to look at it further, or post it into Chess Base yourselves. I'll see you next time.